whether you use polypropylene or mylar or polyethylene, fullbacks, halfbacks, standard coated on one side, current age size, silver age size, or maybe golden age or magazine size, on today's Let's Talk Collecting, we're gonna discuss a topic that every collector eventually has to grapple with, comic book supplies. Check it out. Hey everyone and welcome. My name's Chris and this is North Garden Comics. Today we're gonna tackle a topic that I'll admit I have spent more time thinking about than probably any other topic in comic book collecting besides the comics themselves. And that's a pretty significant statement, but we're gonna discuss that topic that every collector has to think about at some point because we love our comics, we want to protect them and preserve them, and so inevitably, eventually we have to think about how we store them and the supplies that we're gonna to use to protect them for longer than just the, the short term. We're not gonna cover everything on the topic exhaustively, let me say that up front, and I'll also say up front that I'm not gonna tell you these things as an authority. I'm gonna share with you the best practices that I have picked up over 30 plus years of collecting. You may like some of them, you may hate some of them, you may have your own way of doing things, and you gotta find out what's right for you and how you have peace of mind in preserving your own collection. And hopefully this will be somewhat of a dialogue that maybe I, you learn a few things from what you see that I share and I can learn some things from you as well and tips because it's I don't see it as a, a static topic. I continue to think about it, even though I've gotten to a point where I feel pretty good about what I'm doing right now as far as supplies, uh, there's always room for improvement and I'm sure it will evolve over time. So I just wanna have those kind of disclaimers up front. I also wanna say that if you're new to the channel, welcome, I'm so glad you decided to check it out. If you like comic book and comic book related content, please take just a moment and hit that subscribe button. And as you watch, if you see something you like, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And please let me know your thoughts and questions down below. Now, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I'm glad you're part of the conversation. If you've never said hi in the comments, say hello, let me know where you're watching from. I would love to connect with more people who share a love for this hobby of comic book collecting. I mean, you gotta love this hobby. Why else would you make a video about plastic bags and boards that you store your comic books in? Anyway, to the topic at hand, I've been collecting, like I said, for a little over 30 years. And for me, this is a, a subject that's, for a lot of those years created kind of a rub uh, in my mind. I've always been on somewhat of a fixed budget for comic book collecting, though that budget has gotten bigger over time. When I started out as a teenager, I didn't have a ton of money and I wanted to buy comic books. And then, so the thought of having to go spend extra money on bags and boards to protect those comic books, uh, and forget about boxes, we're gonna keep boxes off the table for today, but bags and boards alone, that was money that could potentially cost me comic books. And it was a trade-off. I had to decide, do I want these books or do I want to buy these supplies? And it was rarely a case where it was that I was getting both. So I will say that two primary things that I keep in mind, even today, uh, when I'm looking for bags and boards, first and foremost is price. I'm looking to maximize my dollar when it comes to storing my comics in a safe way. Right? I'm not looking to just, I'm not going to stick them in a Ziploc bag or something like that. So within the realm of reasonable, I will try to stretch my dollar and, and make it the most economical for me as possible. Uh, the second thing that I'll get to is space, but we're going to kind of put a pin in that and talk about that one later. Because I would say that over the course of collecting, price has been probably one of the primary drivers in how I think about bags and boards, where I buy them, how many I buy, what kind I buy, all those kind of things. So... Let me go back and say that, you know, when I started collecting and probably still for most of those collecting years, I was using something like this. This is a current sized comic bag. This is polypropylene. What you see here, I think the, this is Ultra Pro. Yeah, Ultra, Ultra Pro is the brand. You know, depending on where you live, you may see different brands and things carried in your local comic shops, but in the places I've lived all my life, this or something very similar has kind of been the standard go-to that you find available in your comic shops. Some of the uh, more fully stocked stores will have Mylar and some polyethylene, things like that, but this is kind of the, 
the stock uh, item. And it's current size, which means it will hold, well, pretty much everything really from the 80s till today. Uh, there were, as you go back in the comic ages, comics have changed size a little bit over time, but this will hold most modern things. That being said, after a while, I did hit a point where this was not quite good enough. I didn't want to have all different kinds of sizes. I'd like to standardize on one size as much as possible, but if you've used current size bags like this for any length of time, you start to realize that the thicker books and the square bound books that you get sometimes, maybe it's an annual or some of the Transformers books I collect when they do an annual, it's square bound, it's double thick. Those get harder to fit. It gets to be a really tight fit with a, a backing board in there. And so the, the current size eventually for me, I moved away from as my standard bag. And I went to what they call a silver age size bag. And before we get to the silver age, I do wanna say that I do still find some use for the current size bags. And I'll show you some examples like this as we go. A current size bag that I would use today, I use on something like this right here. This is the most recent Marvel free previews. You can pick these up for free in your local comic shop. I get one of these every month in my pre-order of new books from DCBS. And it's not a valuable book at all. It was free and I don't expect it'll ever be valuable, but that doesn't mean I don't wanna take care of it at least a little bit. I'm not going to go so far as to put it in one of the bags and board combos that I use for all my other books, but I do want to give it some kind of protection. And so that's where I've decided, at least for now, to use those current bags. And no, you'll notice no backing board on that. The backing board does offer extra uh, physical protection to the corners and things like that. But when I take that backer board out, A, that reduces my cost, and B, uh, that actually reduces the amount of space that it takes up in the box. So those are, there's those two kind of primary factors in considering storage, price and space. So I just keep these in the current size bag. It lets me fit a lot more in a short box. I can feel like I did something to protect them a little bit, but nothing where I'm really going too crazy because again, it's just a it's just a catalog. And I really think these will be valuable to me maybe 20, 30, 40 years down the road, provided I live that long because it'll be fun little look back at, you know, what were the new books that were coming out back in 2021? So that's where I use those current bags today. But like I said, I kind of moved away from current as my standard bag and I moved to a silver age bag. And I find that, or I have found that a lot of stores and vendors that I see at shows and things do seem to standardize on more of that silver age size bag. It's a little bit wider than your current age bag. And then of course there's the appropriate size backing board that would go with that to, to fit that larger board. And that is an important thing. I think you wanna find the matching size backing board to go with your bag. And like I said, I use the silver. More specifically, I've kind of honed in on uh, the brand BCW. And again, right, these are all opinions. Some of you out there have used these before and like them. Some of you may hate them and you may have a brand that you are loyal to. And I wanna hear about those things in the comments. If you have something that's really worked for you well, let me know down below and share that with others so we can all learn together in this. But uh, my favorite right now are the BCWs. And you'll notice up here, these are called regular slash silver. And we're not gonna get into all the crazy variants of like thick and not gonna talk about the resealables and things like that. Um, you can definitely get into the weeds and we could talk for hours on this topic. But so we're going to keep this somewhat basic. But as far as a basic size, I like the regular silver from BCW. It, it doesn't seem so far, at least in my experience, to get as wavy over time as some of the other brands, maybe like that Ultra Pro. I like the BCWs, but more so even than just the uh, the quality of the bag or just as important as the quality is the size. If you look online, you'll see that a lot of Silver Age bags are advertised at seven and a quarter inches wide. And you'll notice on these from BCW that seven and an eighth inch wide. So it's one eighth narrower. Now the boards that go in there, I've never seen anything other than this. When I'm looking for a silver age board, whether you're talking a fullback or a halfback from E Gerber, or you're talking BCW, or you're talking Ultra Pro, when they advertise something that'd be like that silver age size, you're pretty much talking seven inches wide. Now, why is that significant? Well, I'll show you a couple examples. And disclaimer as well, this is getting really 
this is like the the next level of nerditude, and you you may not share this level of uh, retentiveness about these things, and that's totally fine if you don't. But just being honest here. So here's a Daredevil. This is a Silver Age size bag and Silver Age size board. This is not a BCW bag. Now you'll notice, see on the side here, you've got obviously you've got that white showing there is the backer board, but then I've pushed everything to the other side. So see this gap here? You got about a quarter inch or, or an eighth of an inch maybe that is. Um, you got a small gap here in the side. Not necessarily ideal because I like less movement uh, is better in my opinion. So what I've done with BCW, because their bags are seven and an eighth inch wide as opposed to seven and a quarter, you get a much snugger fit between the board and the edge. So it's a, it's a tiny gap. Sorry if that's getting blurry there. So seven and an eighth inch wide bag, seven inch wide board. So again, is, is that necessary? No, that's just become my preference. So do as you please, collect what you like and uh, use the supplies that you feel comfortable with. But just thought I'd point that out that just because it says silver or some other age size, depending on the manufacturer, there could be variations in the measurements uh, of that bag uh, or, or board as the case may be. Now, as we kind of evolve in our collecting, um, if you're watching this, you're probably interested in comic book supplies, which means you've probably watched other videos or talked to other people about comic book supplies, which means at some point, inevitably, you've heard or participated in the great Polly versus Mylar debate. I will be honest and say I don't have any particular problems with the poly bags. I have used them for the most part for 30 plus years and with very few exceptions, I've had no problems with them at all. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that polypropylene is terrible. If you wanna read something about it, a really good uh, blog article actually, Bill Brittall, uh, who still, I believe, has the Guinness Book World Record for the largest private comic book collection. Uh, he is online and I will put a link to that blog down below, but he did a, a blog article years ago now and I think it was called like boxes and bags and boards oh my or something like that and he wrote about it and um, I, I did like one thing he said where he said that there are many people who will make you feel as though putting your bat your books in a polypropylene bag is tantamount to wrapping them in tissue paper and laying them outside in the rain uh, and so you know, I, I, I don't take that stance. I'm, for the most part, fine with the poly bags. And I, I don't foresee my collection, you know, translating over to Mylar uh, in 100%, you know, anytime soon. I'm not going to go so far as to say that I don't prefer Mylar. Uh, I will admit right away, Mylar is absolutely the best looking bag out there for presentation. And I've said this in other videos that even if you have a book that's got some, you know, some some quality or grading issues on the cover. It's got some ticks and some other things like that. When you, you look at it just in the raw, you notice all those defects. When you put it in Mylar, Mylar covers over a multitude of defects. So it looks great. The biggest problem I've historically had with Mylar is the price. When you compare how much it costs to put a book inside a polypropylene bag with a your standard backer board versus mylar and then a completely acid free half backer full back it's more than double the cost so let's break it down to like a per book kind of a cost usually you're going to buy 100 bags and 100 boards that's how they sell them in, in local shops and most places online that's the kind of the standard unit of measure and one set of bags and boards, if you're talking something like, you know, your, your basic polypropylene bag and, and pack of boards is going to probably cost you um, 15, 16 dollars, somewhere in that range. So when you divide that out, you're talking 15 or 16 cents per comic to put it in a bag and board. So not too bad. You go to Mylar and I just checked E. Gerber site. E. Gerber is a manufacturer of Mylar supplies. They are not the only supplier. They may be the most famous or the most recommended, but um, you can order directly from them. And 
uh, the price impacts you in two ways. One, the price for bags and boards, like I said, is nearly double. I think to get a hundred standard sized bags and a hundred halfback backer boards, that's the same thickness as one of the, you know, your basic backing board that you buy in a comic shop, a hundred each of those, you're up to like $36 before you get to shipping. So $36, breaks down to 36 cents a comic. So 20 cents more per comic to be able to bag and board in Mylar and a half pack as opposed to that poly and standard backer board. So that's a pretty significant deterrent if you don't have a lot of money to spend on comic book supplies. Uh, the second thing that has been an obstacle for me historically with a company like E Gerber is that in order to place an order on their website, you have to hit a hundred dollar minimum before you can place an order, and then you're gonna have shipping on top of that. So you need to have a, uh, what I guess that's a serious chunk of change to spend on bags and boards in one fell swoop before you can even place an order with them. Now, I will say there's, there's a couple ways that you can get around that. Uh, one would be talk to your local comic shop, because like I said, there are some that uh, carry them already, and so maybe, you at least can get away from the $100 minimum to be able to buy some, just pick up a pack of each. But you also may be able to get them to order them for you if you're not, um, if they don't carry them normally. So that's one thing, talk to your local comic shop, they might be able to work with you. And then two, something you could do is if you wanna get them from E Gerber, you could talk to some friends that are also collectors and then pool your resources and maybe each put in a certain amount of money and then you get over that $100 limit, you get that order, and then you've all you know saved a little bit in the sense that you didn't have to fork out a huge amount of money all at once just to get an order. And I keep referring to eGerber because on a per bag and per board price, that's the best bet that I've found. You know, I look on Amazon and you can find other companies, but the price is just astronomical for Mylar. And so the prices that I just quoted for you, like I said, I just looked those up on eGerber. I think most of the things you find on Amazon are even more. If you know a cheaper way to do it, please again, share that down below so I and others can learn with you and we can, you know, not spend an arm and a leg just to get uh, the best bags and boards for our comic. All right, quick recap. Current bags and boards to start with, evolved into Silver Age size bags and boards, which evolved into a desire to have Mylar bags and completely acid-free backing boards, which I've now been able to achieve and make a, a sizable purchase from eGerber for those. But when you're talking Marla, you're still talking more than double the price of the poly bags. So where do you go from here? And at this point, I wanna share something that I picked up from another YouTuber about a year ago. I was watching the channel Library of Comics. I will put a link to his channel down below. And one of the things that I noticed that he would do with his runs of books was that he would put two books per bag and board combo. And I know I've seen other people do that in the past and maybe I just wasn't at the point to really accept that or to consider that as something uh, that I wanted to take on myself. But when I saw him doing that last year, it really clicked for me that not only could I get Mylar for my bags and boards, but by putting two books per bag, I actually would cut that cost in half. So instead of 36 cents a book, now you're talking 18 cents a book. And if you remember what I said it cost to do a poly and standard bag combo was like 15, 16 cents a book. Now you're really only talking two, maybe three cent difference to go from the polys to the mylars. And so that was, I, I don't want to go so far as to call it revolutionary, but it was pretty impactful for me. And so to show you an example, what I have now, here's in mylar, this is from my Transformers volume one collection, looks great in the mylar, but then whoosh, Flip it around, look at that. You got a bag, uh, you got a book on the back as well. Now, a couple things I'll say about this. One, the way the reason this works is because of the type of backing board you're dealing with. This is a 100% acid-free backing board. Pull one out here. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but it looks 
a little bit kind of like matte finish. It, it, it doesn't look, it's not glossy at all. It's just a basic finish or no finish at all. And it looks the same. That's kind of a good look there. Uh, looks the same on both sides. This is 100% acid free through and through. And if I compare that to, I'm just pulling out a example of a book that happens to be here. I didn't get any out for this. Here is a standard backing board. And gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this well. But maybe when it picks up the light, you can see there's more of a, a shine to that side. And then this other side, no shine. It's just a matte finish. This is the standard kind of backing board you buy in most local comic shops, and they're cheaper. But these are not 100% acid free. They are coated on one side. So they're protected on that side, and that's the side you wanna put your comic book against. This other side is not coated, and so you don't wanna put a book against that side of the board. And so the double booking a bag really only works with that that 100% acid-free backing board. Otherwise, you're gonna introduce acidity and ink transfer and all kinds of risks um, when you if you try that on this kind of a standard backing board. So that's the one caveat that I have to say about doing that. But otherwise, putting two books in a bag has been great. Because again, cuts that cost in half. But you heard me mention a couple times, the other factor in my bag and board and supply thoughts is about space. And this really introduced a big space saver that I never really thought about before. Consider this, you have a hundred bags and a hundred boards and say you're gonna put those and just use a hundred books. So one book per bag and board. For every hundred books you bag and board, you're adding this much space to your short box or long box or wherever you store your comic books. And each individual one doesn't seem like much, but when you add it up per hundred, that's a lot. So in a short box, if you have 150 to 200 books, picture double this thickness that's just your supplies. And then in a long box, maybe up to 300 books, triple this, and that's how much space is being taken up by just your bags and boards. So that's a lot of real estate in those boxes. And so however many books you have is gonna spill over into more boxes than if you double up. So you double up, now for every 100 books that you bag and board, uh, you will save this much space in your short boxes. And the reason that's significant for me is not just the space in any particular box, but if I can save this much space for every 100 books, you start to multiply that out over thousands of comic books and think about how much space now I'm saving uh, in my storage room and not just saving space, how much more space I have to have more comic books added to my collection and not take up more room. So half the cost and uh, it takes up a lot less space. And again, when I've seen this in the past, it didn't appeal to me, I didn't like that very much, but when I saw a uh, library of comics do this, like I said, about a year ago, I was ready, I guess, and something clicked and it, it made sense. Um, one other uh, benefit of double booking your bags and boards is that now you have your spines alternating. So you may have heard some people talk about when they're all going the same direction, all the spines are on the same side. This spine side, because of the staples uh, and just that being the spine is a little bit thicker than the outside edge. And so when they're all stacked up on one side, then you get them a little bit off. And so there are people who would recommend alternating your books and by double booking a bag, that's a, it's kind of a tongue twister. Uh, you'll be able to remedy that and then you get you get the flat, it's flatter. The last couple things I wanna talk about are very recent discoveries for me and it has to do with how you seal these bags. Scotch tape is kind of the most common thing that people use. I used to use two pieces of tape here on whatever kind of bag board combo I was using. I've ne I then kind of evolved to just a single piece of tape, but I have noticed with Mylar, for example, that even if I'm careful, when I try to open this, uh, it didn't do it on this one, but there are times where that little piece of scotch tape rips. And so then I'm left with a piece of tape on here that I need to, I need to try to peel off. And it's just, it, it's not functionally bad. It's just kind of ugly to look at. And I mean, 
collecting comics is in some part the the visual presentation of that art so didn't love having that piece of tape there and even more so when it would get wrecked when you open it up and i was watching a video gosh it may have been a1 comics i want to say i'll put a link to them down below if you want to check out some of their videos uh, but i think that's where i first heard it and uh, again i'm sure there are other people doing this but they had recommended using Avery Dots. What do I mean by Avery Dots? Avery's the brand. The dots are just these little stickers. And so I purchased a few packs of these off of Amazon. You know, very, very cheap. And now I've started to switch to those. So what that looks like is front book here. And on the back, there's the little dot. And then when I go to open this, it peels very easily. That dot comes off the mylar, easy peasy. Now I can take my books out, not risk any tape sticking to them. And then when I go to close them back up again, the dot goes right back on and it stays. The only downside I can see to this is that it is a white dot or whatever color you choose that goes on the back there. And that's not the best look, but you know, first world problems. And my books live 99.9% .9 of their lives in these short boxes that are all around me here. So I'm really not gonna be impacted by a little white dot. If there's a book I really want for presentation, I'll give it its own bag and board. You won't see that dot on covering the, you know, the, the cover of the book and hindering that art presentation. You'll just get the pre presentation on the front. But for most things, that works really, really well. So that's a great uh, best practice and pro tip that I picked up. So the last thing I'll say about the Avery Dots is another tip that I picked up from others uh, on YouTube and otherwise is they will color code their books. So I've decided to use, for example, white just to indicate your basic standard, no nothing special. But I have thought uh, of introducing a couple other colors, one that may you know, indicate that's a key of some sort. Uh, this is this would be indicators for people maybe after I'm dead and gone and somebody needs to go through my collection. Uh, but maybe indicating a key or a different color may indicate to a family member that this was a sentimental book. May not have monetary value, but it was sentimental. But they have a kind of a key to indicate what that color represents. So that way, if somebody else has to go through your collection, uh, they'll have a little bit of a guide to navigate them through that. So just some thoughts that I've picked up from others. And um, hopefully some of them are beneficial to you. All right, that's gonna do it for me, and that's gonna do it for this episode of Let's Talk Collecting, covering bags, boards, scotch tape, Avery Dots, what have you. What are your thoughts on this topic? Do you have a system figured out, or are you new to this and you're still trying to figure it out? Let me know down below. If you've hung in there this long and you haven't done so yet, please go ahead and do that YouTube thing. Hit that subscribe, give it a thumbs up. If you're not quite ready for the fun to stop, I've got a couple of hand-selected videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.